Today we have stories about GLP-1s in the news from Eli Lilly taking Zepbound and Manjaro off of the FDA shortage list to, it turns out, semaglutide doesn't actually cause blindness. Stay tuned and we'll tell you the news. Hello there. Welcome to the Downsize News. It's Monday, August 5th. I'm Lorraine Durham, and this is my husband, Christopher Durham, and we're here to bring you the latest updates, insights, and opinions on GLP-1 medications like Manjaro, Zebbound, Wagovi, Ozempic, Terzepatide, and Semaglutide. And just a reminder, while we are passionate about GLP-1s and weight loss, we're not doctors. Always consult a qualified healthcare professional before starting or adjusting any weight loss medication or treatment. Okay, now let's get into today's news. What's the first story? Yeah, lots of meaty stories, of course. (laughs) So this week's top story, and it follows a big video we did on it, so we'll just do an abbreviated version here, and I'll leave a link to the extended version in the description. Eli Lilly and company is poised to address the ongoing shortage of its popular weight loss medication, ZepBound. The company CEO, David Ricks, announced in a recent interview that the shortage is expected to end very soon, potentially within the next day or so. And it turns out the very next day, just after I published the video, it was updated on the FDA website. The news could significantly impact the billion-dollar industry of compounded versions of these high-demand drugs. Zepbound, which is also known by its active ingredient terzepatide, is sold under the brand name Manjaro for diabetes management and Zepbound for weight loss, as we all know. The drug has seen tremendous success since its FDA approval last November with Zepbound alone generating $517 million in sales during the first quarter, while Manjaro brought in a staggering $1.8 billion. Make sure to watch the video we published on Friday to get all the details. So what do you think of this whole conversation with Eli Lilly? I still think I called the pharmacy and they don't have it in stock, so how do they figure it's not in shortage anymore? What what, uh, metric did they use to determine that it's not in shortage? Because everywhere I call, they don't have it. So when we go into a detail in, on the video, but it's a self-reported piece. So the manufacturer tells the FDA there's no shortage, there's no shortage or there is a shortage, and there's nobody going back and checking on it. But I think and what I, do we care if they say there's a shortage or not? What it has the potential to impact is the way compounding is done. Mm-hmm. So is my compounded pharmacy going to go away? I go into extensive detail in the video on well, that. Well, I don't want to watch the other video. You don't want to watch the other video? Right of course you don't. So <laughs> yes, no, maybe is the answer. Yeah, I, I don't think compounding is, is going away anytime soon. Basically, uh, 5013Bs, A's and B's are two different kinds of pharmacies. The B... The only reason it can do things like this is because it's in shortage. So if it's in shortage, one part of 5013s cannot do the uh, compounding, the other part can. So 503As, which is Hallandale, Red Rock, Akita, there's a bunch of them out there. We talk about them all the time. So my pharmacy will be able to continue they to They should be able to continue to compound the medication. Maybe they'll have to add a B12 or something like I'll that. They'll have to do it. something that is unique to your needs as a patient. So yeah. that they say this is a unique product. And it must be compounded for me. It must be compounded for Lorraine. Got it. So is it going to go away? I don't think it's going to go away. Is it going to become challenging? And does, does Eli Lilly really want it to go away? And will they send out mean, nasty letters? Probably. Yeah. I'd love to take the regular name brand. The pen looks a lot mm-hmm. easier than my yeah. needle and the pen. insulin syringe and vial. But... Also, the price has to come down. So I'm at the compounder for the price and the accessibility. Absolutely. And Eli Lilly and Nova Nordis could both shut down compounding just by lowering prices almost overnight. Yeah. If they lowered the price to below the compounding pharmacy price, of course. I'd rather go walk over to CVS than have it FedEx to me from Florida or Utah. Yeah, the challenge for them is if they decide to do that, they couldn't keep up. Mm -hmm. If they all of a sudden said, oh, this is $250 a month. They would be into billions of prescriptions. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way they could keep up. We'll continue to follow this. You may see updates. Um, Eli Lilly and Nova Nordisk both have their quarterly analyst calls next week. We'll be covering them extensively. So you may see a couple of videos in a day on Wednesday and Thursday because Mm -hmm. of the calls. Stay tuned. If you have not already reported and you currently have a ZepBound or a Manjaro prescription that you cannot get filled, go to the FDA uh, website and report the shortage. If the FDA doesn't know, they can't do anything about it. 
I'll put the link in the description, but please go report the shortage. But if you're out there on the social media, hashtag ZetBound Shortage. <laughs> you think they look at that? You um, at least know I that don't FDA think it could hurt. Couldn't it hurt. couldn't hurt. So it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. In a reassuring update for those using GLP-1s, a recent analysis shows that these drugs do not increase the risk of a specific form of optic neuropathy that could potentially lead to blindness. The findings were published in the journal in the Journal of Diabetes Science and Technology. Earlier, a study published in JAMA Ophthalmology raised concerns that adults using semaglutide, marketed as Azempic and Wagovi, had a higher risk of developing non-arteriac anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. It's a lot of words. A condition that can result in vision loss. However, this study was limited to patients from a single ophthalmology clinic leading experts to question the generalizability yep. of its findings. Dr. David C. Klonoff, medical director at the Dorothy L. and James E. Frank Diabetes Research Institute, pointed out these limitations. He and his team decided to take a broader look, analyzing data from a large electronic health record and claims database encompassing 66 million people in the United States. The analysis revealed no significant increase in the risk of blindness due to NAION NAON, mm -hmm. among those using semaglutide or other GLP-1 receptor agonists compared to those using other weight loss medications. Dr. Klonoff expressed confidence in the finding, noting that the results provide reassurance to those concerned about the potential side effects of GLP-1 drugs. Researchers conducted several analyses, controlling for various factors, and consistently found no increased risk of NION among GLP-1 users. The findings were the same, even when focusing specifically on semaglutide users or those with type 2 diabetes or obesity. They also confirmed the results using another large database from Stanford Healthcare. Dr. Klonoff acknowledges that a randomized controlled trial would provide even stronger evidence. He believes the current data is convincing. He also noted that funding such a large-scale trial might be unlikely unless further concerns arise. For now, the analysis should offer comfort to those using GLP-1 medications, reinforcing that these drugs are not linked to an increased risk of this rare form of optic neuropathy. Dr. Klonoff advises that while healthcare providers and patients should always be aware of potential side effects, the overall evidence suggests that GLP-1s are safe. Does this make you feel a little better? Because you were concerned about even publishing that last I, I Yeah, I think some people grab a hold of these little data points and twist them around to have an explosive reaction where this particular study they figured out it just wasn't applicable to general population. So, yeah, your GLP-1 is not going to lead to blindness. Ozempic is not going to lead to blindness. Thank goodness. Period. Story number three, exciting news from the Alzheimer's Association International Conference 2024. The GLP-1 drug liraglutide, known for its use in diabetes and weight loss, so an early version of a GLP-1, may also help protect against cognitive decline in people with mild Alzheimer's. Phase 2B clinical trial led by Professor Paul Edison from Imperial College London studied 204 patients with mild Alzheimer's. The study found that those treated with liraglutide experienced an 18% slower decline in cognitive function over one year compared to those who received a placebo. The research also showed that liraglutide slowed the shrinking of brain regions critical for memory language and decision making. While the trial's primary goal of changing glucose metabolism in the brain was not met, the drug significantly slowed cognitive decline and reduced brain volume loss. This suggests that liraglutide may protect the brain in multiple ways, such as reducing inflammation and improving nerve cell communication. Though more research is needed to confirm these findings, the results are promising. Dr. Maria C. Carrillo, chief science officer at the Alzheimer's Association, emphasized that repurposing drugs like liraglutide, which are already approved for other conditions, could accelerate the development of new treatments for Alzheimer's. The side effects were mostly mild, with gastrointestinal issues being the most common. Current clinical trials like the Evoke Plus study further explore the potential of GLP-1 drugs in treating Alzheimer's. I think this is exciting, Very right? exciting. Yeah, treatment for Alzheimer's with GLP-1 drugs, that's great. That's great news. 
who doesn't know somebody who's been touched by this disease. I, so. I have a, a friend whose father is at the end of his Alzheimer's, and it seems like, and it's just, it's so terrible. It's such a terrible disease, so I'm glad that maybe these GLP ones could help. It's just this soul-crushing thing that if, even an 18% better chance, yeah. who doesn't want it? Absolutely. On our next story, Eli Lilly's Trisepatide, sold under the brand name Zepbound, has shown promising new benefits beyond weight loss. Again, what can these drugs yeah. not do? In a recent phase three clinical trial, trisepatide was found to significantly reduce the risk of death or serious complications from a type of heart failure by 38% compared to a placebo. The study, named Summit, involved participants with obesity, some of whom also had diabetes. The drug reduced the risk of heart failure complications and led to noticeable improvements in heart failure symptoms and other health markers such as better performance on a walking test and reductions in inflammation. These findings are particularly exciting because they add to the growing list of benefits associated with incretin drugs for zepatide. These drugs are already approved for diabetes and weight loss and are now being studied for their potential to help with other health issues, including heart failure, sleep apnea, and chronic kidney disease. While the detailed results of the study are yet to be published, the top-line findings are enough for Lilly to plan on sharing the data with regulators later this year. This could potentially expand the approved uses of trisepatide, making it an even more versatile medication. Trisepatide's success in the Summit trial positions it as a strong competitor to Novo Nordisk's Wagovi, which has also shown heart benefits in previous studies. The trial design of Summit, which focused on reducing heart failure complications as a primary goal, might give Lilly an edge in convincing insurers to cover the drug for this specific use. Lilly continues to study trisepatide's potential to prevent heart problems in other groups, with more results as expected in the coming years. As these medications show broader health benefits, they could play an even more significant role in managing obesity and related conditions. Again. So heart disease yeah. helps your heart. It, that's just awesome. It's another thing these GLP ones can do. But my first thought is then it's going to be even harder to get. <laughs> will uh, that drive the price up? Will it make the price um, come down? How do we drive the price down? Is what I want. To well, know. it's a supply and demand thing. So the more people that want it, but their challenge is okay. supply. There's plenty of demand. There's not challenges. They can't make enough, so they've got mm -hmm. to get enough factories in place to be able to make this and we need to have enough other competitors go online mm -hmm. such that there's four or five six other drugs out there that your doctor would say i'm going to write the best one for you not just one of the two choices that'd be great story number five the fda is alerting healthcare providers compounders and patients about serious dosing errors mm -hmm. associated with compounded semaglutide injectable products i would say this is also true of terzepatide yeah but let's talk about it. These errors have led to adverse events with some patients needing hospitalization. Many patients receive compounded semaglutide were inexperienced with self-injections. Errors occurred when patients mistakenly measured and administered incorrect doses, often because they were confused by different units of measure, millimeters, milligrams, and units, or were unfamiliar with drawing medication from vials. Healthcare providers also made mistakes in calculating the correct doses when prescribing these compounded products. Some providers miscalculated doses, leading to patients receiving up to 10 times more than intended, Oof. resulting in severe side effects like vomiting, nausea, and even more serious complications. The FDA urges patients to speak with their healthcare provider or compounder about how to properly measure and administer their prescribed dose of semaglutide. Or terzepatide. Providers should ensure patients receive the appropriate syringe size and clear instructions to avoid confusion. Additionally, healthcare providers should be aware that compounded semaglutide and terzepatide products may come in different concentrations and should double check dose calculations to prevent errors. The FDA has received reports of dosing errors that resulted in a range of adverse effects including gastrointestinal issues, dehydration, fainting, headaches, and in more serious cases, pancreatitis and gallstones. Many of these issues were due to patients administering doses much higher than prescribed. If you are using compounded medications, please ensure you fully understand how to measure and administer your medication correctly and consult your health care provider with any questions. Yeah. So let's talk about this, because I see this every day on Facebook yeah. pretty much. It's right. the, 
I withdrew ten <laughs> units. I have three milligrams. I, I yeah. all this stuff, and there are so many co- people confusing the volume of liquid in a syringe. Mm-hmm. With With the amount of medication that's in the concentration. Read the directions on the box. Read all the materials that come with your medication. That little paper that's folded all up. Mm -hmm. Pull it out. Read it. Read the box. Read the dosing instructions. Have a friend read it. (laughs) Read the... Make sure... Because I certainly had never uh, given myself a shot before this. We get these insulin syringes and the vials and you there's a process to draw it out i made a video on how to give yourself the shot you can go watch but this is measured in units so it goes from 10 20 30 40 up to 100 units and so for and my not all syringes are like that not all they syringes could be different. are like that and the way my particular compounding pharmacy mixes up this medication is A 2.5 milligram dose is 25 units, but that doesn't mean that's how Red Rock Pharmacy mixes it up, or that doesn't mean that's how any other pharmacy in America mixes it up. It could all be different. Yours could be different than your friends. Even sometimes from the same pharmacy, it could be different. So that's why it's so important to read the box, read your instructions. If you have a question, reach out to your provider. I know Mochi Health has a phone number. You can text 24 hours a day with any questions, call, text. And the most important number is the milligrams of medication that are in your shot. Yeah. You need to know the units as well, but start with the actual amount of medication. You know exactly what you're getting. Just double check, triple check if you're not sure. Follow the directions. Follow your health care provider's instructions. And we're not doctors. We're not doctors. But I always start with the recommendation from the manufacturer and from the physician. You're not a doctor unless you went to medical school. You're not. No matter how good you are, you're not a doctor. And then if you need to adjust, have conversations with your physician and adjust mm-hmm. appropriately. Don't just willy-nilly go, I'm going to take 17 today and 6 tomorrow. And Yeah, I, I think it just... And with the compounded medication, you have a lot more leeway than with the pen where you mm-hmm. just point but sheet. I'll, I'll put the graphic up that the FDA used when we talk about this. And the graphic shows pretty clearly that people don't understand the difference between units and milligrams and they're yeah, basically I, they're yeah. saying five milligrams and they're injecting 50 units, 50 units and that in that case is 10 times the amount of medication so well, that, it will make you sick it, just and it will cost you a lot more money yeah you don't <laughs> you don't want to inject more than your provider has prescribed for you because the reason why you go up in dosage slowly is because you want to limit those side effects. If you jump from a 2.5 milligram dose to a 12.5 milligram dose, your body might go, whoa, wait a minute, I don't like this. And, and it, it might doesn't mean you'll lose weight some, faster. No. People have lost 50 pounds on 2.5 milligrams. Some people have to keep going up in dose every four weeks till they get to 15, and there's people at all levels in between. So that's why I like to track your dose with a spreadsheet or in the notes app of your phone or somewhere where you can know what dose you've been taking and how many weeks you've been on that particular dose because I forget like I forget what I had for lunch yesterday like how am I going to remember four weeks ago what dose I took and what my results were and what my side effects were so so I like to write everything down so long story short (laughs) too late make sure you accurately give yourself a shot make sure you are giving yourself the correct dose prescribed by your physician yes we do not want you to get sick or spend more money than you need to because you used way too much medicine. Because you used up all your <laughs> Yeah, you used all your medicine in the first shot. That'd be bad. That'd be bad. Please join us on Thursday for the Downsize Live. This week we'll be back at our regular time of 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We'll be taking questions live. Please join us. It's a great time. You can ask questions, chat amongst the couple hundred people in the group. We and uh, check out our website and GLP-1 Companion Product Store at thedownsize.org for more resources and information. Thank you for being a valued member of our Downsize family as we navigate this GLP-1 adventure together. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated. I'm Lorraine Durham. And I'm Christopher Durham. Until next time, take care and stay well.